welcome back. We're so excited to have you back to join us for some more great content today. Yeah, Gary is going to be talking about the strategy deployment system, and he's going to talk about how the supply chain connects to our corporate strategy. This is going to be really good. We'll catch you at the end. So I'm going to talk about strategy deployment and uh, the system that we use to connect everybody to strategy. This was one of the things on your notes that you, you had an interest in hearing about. Uh, we actually do this extremely well. Uh, we've been doing strategy deployment for, I think, 25 years or something like that. Um, there we go. So it all starts with the, the corporate strategy map. And you, you saw this map on every team huddle board that you went to. Every team knows what the strategy map is. They understand, they have been explained to all of the, all of the objectives, the Growth Simplify Deliver. They could, they could describe the core competencies to you. They know this language down the bottom, which I'm gonna to get to in a minute. They, they know the strategy map. And, and the way the strategy map is developed is uh, every August, uh, all the global VPs come together up, we go up the canyon to Stein Erickson Lodge above Park City, and we spend about four days together uh, just hashing the business, uh, listening to reports, uh, arguing about data, and uh, we break up into about six different groups that are totally cross-functional. So Dave and Tolan and I are never in the same group. We're always in a group with salespeople and marketing people and finance people, et cetera, et cetera. And we tackle a, a problem, an issue, something we're trying to solve as a company. And we spend about a day and a half arguing about it, debating it, coming to a conclusion. We come back to the big group. We, each, we all present to each other. And, and from that, lots of discussion, lots of dialogue, the, all the, ex the global executives become very unified in terms of glomming on to those issues that that seems to really matter. What you guys just said, I think that's a big deal. And by the time the, uh, the meeting ends, uh, we're all very unified. All the, all the executives are agreeing what the direction is and where we need to go. <clears throat> that meeting, uh, uh, I would say, uh, some 10, 15 years ago, uh, and Dave would agree with this, that meeting felt more departmental and people were arguing for their thing and against other people's things. And I would say in the last seven, eight years or so, it's just become very productive. Everyone puts on a corporate hat and thinks about the big picture. Uh, very powerful, I think. There is... Uh, uh, Everyone is free to disagree with each other, but there's a, there's a good feeling amongst the executives, um, not unlike the feeling that you have felt in the factory floor. Uh, <clears throat> also, all the executives globally bring their, their spouses or significant other. So, you know, uh, uh, I was just talking to Zubin today, who is the managing director of our Indian operation. Uh, his wife, Gulshan, and my wife, they, they hit it off. Uh, the, my wife likes Gulshan a lot. And, and uh, it's, just, it's just nice that it gives that extra connection, you know, when Zubin comes in and sits down, that, that we've got that extra link uh, that, that kind of binds us together. So I think that's, I think connection, I've said that a couple of times, I think connection is a, is a big deal. Um, so we come out of the VP meeting and um, two weeks later, uh, Dave and Tolan and I are meeting with all of our people all of our management, I should say. So the, the group leaders you just met, uh, all of their peers, plus the engineers, plus all the systems people, um, there's about 80 people or something like that. We're in the theater right here. And um, we basically share with them everything that was talked about at the VP meeting to kind of get them on the same, to understand why some things are important to the company right now and some things are not. Everyone's got their thing they want to push. Everyone's got their thing they want to get done. But if they understand why these are the areas of focus, they can, they can let their thing go a little bit. And they can focus on this big picture instead. Uh, there's, a, there's a solid week of that. There is a, uh, uh, on a Tuesday, I meet with all the global directors. So director of operations in Australia comes in, director of operations in India, Toronto, London. We all come together with my directors and VPs here and we have a full day of just data and talking. And, and we end up meeting with a strong direction of what we think matters to supply chain. 
and then the next day uh, all the others come in and we're just we're just hitting accounting comes and presents the income statement for their product lines um, marketing comes in talks about new products sales comes in talks about clients just just ton of data this is the statements on the bottom of our strategy map I'm gonna read it to you it all starts with our people and these are pictures uh, there's there's like three people from manufacturing and then there's other people from every department or in this in this slide it all starts with our people we appreciate people who believe we're bigger together than we are apart who work shoulder to shoulder even when they don't see eye to eye who have great ideas and genius solutions and a collaborative spirit who understand what clients really need is a good listening to who watch out speak up work safely who keep their promises learn lessons laugh spread joy and create a sense of family who do the right thing because it's the right thing to do who realize that ultimately we're in the most important business of all the business of valuing people this is foundational for our strategy map and um, we hire to this statement we coach to this statement we talk about this all the time and people reference it all the time. Like we'll be in a service award presentation honoring somebody and, and, and people will be talking about what they love about whomever and they'll use lines from here. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah. And it's just how better to reinforce this and to hear it described in somebody who you're honoring. And everyone's realizing that's who we are. That's what's expected of us. Um, I think that's an important part of our strategy map. The other important part is at the very top, the purpose statement, we help people thrive at work. And we help every employee under connect to that statement that this matters. And so we, uh, we're on the Fortune 100 Great Places to Work list on a regular basis. And uh, when we take that survey, uh, pride in company, we, we are off the charts. We beat, we beat everybody. Usually it's, it's healthcare and medical uh, emergency personnel who score the highest. OC Tanner has the highest scores that they ever get from pride. And I think it's purpose. I think it's the fact that we do that. I remember, I remember at one point the executive team was trying to convince Carolyn, who was our chair of the board, who this room is named after, um, that we were going to hit half a billion in sales and uh, probably hit 800 million this year, half a billion in sales. And uh, we were all excited about it. And, and she's listening to us and she says, um, I, just, I just don't think that goal is really going to resonate with everybody. You know, I, is it really the dollars that you're chasing? <laughs> it was like, we were like, oh, oh, yeah, no, certainly not. And uh, <laughs> she was like, isn't it more important to, to, to impact lives and to, to make people's workplace better? I mean, shouldn't we talk about recognition moments and the power of the product? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty good when your chair of the board is, uh, is reprimanding you for not remembering the purpose, uh, what really matters. Um, so I mentioned this offsite that happens in August and uh, we went through that and then we come back here and we're doing this and we're in the middle of doing this right now. Uh, September is our strategy deployment month. Uh, we do it every six months, so it's September and it's March. And um, twice a year, we celebrate, we recognize, uh, we do a lot of data review, we share insights, and then teams define and set their goals. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through uh, how that happens. Week one is review and celebrate. So yeah, all these walls come down, the class comes out, and uh, every team sets up a booth and uh, we spend an afternoon, it's raucous, it's loud, it's high energy. Everyone's coming through, talking to everybody else, and everyone's bragging about the, the, what they accomplished. Very powerful. Uh, I'm standing out here and I'm just, the noise is just huge and I love it. It feels like a sporting event. And uh, I love sporting events, but I love this. There's a lot of power there. Um, the extravaganza, uh, every team presents their lead and lag outcomes, their cost savings, their improvements, their safety. Um, here's a close up of Dom. His, he's, he was running one of the acrylic teams that Mike was talking about. Now he's in 
uh, maintenance. He, he made a move. But look at it, I mean, he's just excited to show what they've got. They're talk this is an example of all the stuff that they'll be showing everybody and uh, really showing off. There was so much energy down here. I went back and I sent an email to my peers on the executive team. Um, and I just told them, you know, I, I don't want to have something this awesome and not give you a chance to be included in it. So six months from now, we're going to do this again. If you want to join us, all you got to do is pick yourself a six month goal, keep track of it, record it and come brag about it. Who's in and immediately six members of the executive team asked if they could join us in March's strategy fair. So I'm very excited about that. Sales is going to be here, technology, um, who else have legal signed up, uh, finance, uh, client success, and somebody else. Don't remember who the other one was. Who? Accounting. Yeah, accounting signed up. So anyway, it's going to be awesome, I think, when we do this again in, in March, get them included. Well, I sure hope they have something to show, because otherwise they're going to be embarrassed by our teams. Uh, they'll have something good to show. Um, so I want to give you an example. It says here we talk about lead and lag outcomes. And so here is a target statement for, uh, this is for emblem efficiency. The target condition is we're going to decrease labor cost per piece from 40 cents to 33 cents and 18% improvement by the end of the strategy period. That's standard. That's standard for us. That's how we write target statement, some key metric from this to that, and some huge improvement by the end, in six months from now. Uh, so the lag is cost per piece. That's what they're trying to improve. The lead is the thing that every team member is going to come in every day thinking about, okay, I need to do something to help this happen. What is that? We need to implement five process improvements. There's five. There's one month to cascade strategy and come up with here. So there's only five months in the six month period to actually do the work. So they're saying every month they're gonna they're gonna come implement a process improvement was their lead metric. So um, they actually ended up implementing seven, and four others were still in progress. They did one a month in April, May, and June. And then I think they started to worry that it wasn't enough. They weren't going to hit their lag goal. So they pulled the lever harder and implemented two in July and August. And as you say, they have, they have four more to go. These were the ones that they were doing. And the impact was, uh, the fact, they went from 40 cents all the way down to 32 cents. So they actually ended up about a 20% about a gain in five months. 20% improvement on cost per piece. That's not bad, right? Uh, here's another one, emblem quality, target condition, improve first time quality, decre decrease quality issues from an average of 45 a month to an average of 35 a month, a 22% improvement. Uh, so the lag is reduced QIs. The lead is we will do weekly process and product audits, one for each team member with teaching moments. So every week, every team member will do a weekly process and product audits. That was their lead metric. So. So what do you want me to do to reduce QIs? I want you to make sure that this week you do your process and product audit. Will you do that? I can do that. And then some of those they're saying would turn into teaching moments, that they'd uncover something that, oh, let's talk about that. That's a teaching moment. Imagine team members auditing each other and then say, teaching each other what they saw or, or an issue with what they saw. And they're helping each other get better. What a powerful statement. Yeah, well said, Dave. Thank you. The hundreds of audits, and they got eight teaching moments that came out of that. And, uh, oops. And the net effect is they went from uh, 45 to 11, 75% improvement in quality through, through doing this. Pretty powerful. Uh, here's another one. Let's see, that's just overall metrics. Uh, here's another one. Uh, improved cost per piece by 15% from 247 to 210 by the end of the strategy period. And they were going to do nine process improvements per month, one per team member per month. They did that, and they made their goal. And that's them showing that they saved $195,000 in six months. These guys here did. Um, this is such an improvement-minded team 
that now there are only four people on that team. <laughs> we show, when we show them the strategy map, when we roll out the strategy map, we talk about uh, these are the things that really matter to the company right now. We're talking about a lot of things. Yes. We're asking them, go back as a team and spend two weeks asking yourselves, what's the most important thing we can do that would matter to the company? And come back and tell me what that is and then show me on the map where you found that. I think a team will do a better job of agreeing on something that really matters. I think sometimes an individual might go off the weird end on, well, we ought to, whatever. And a team kind of brings that back and where the team is agreeing, let's work on this together. And I, and I have, I, I'm never dissatisfied with what the teams decide to do. Uh, I do often have to ask now, now where did you find this on the strategy map? And they'll say, it's right here. Uh, now in the early days of, of strategy deployment, we, they would often come up with their pet projects, the thing they had always wanted to do. And now here it is, you're gonna whatever, help me do this. And I go, where is that on the strategy map? Uh, yeah, let's go back and do it again. It has to be a good connection. And we, we've shut down a lot of things early on that didn't really connect. We also had a lot of people come in with, with target statements that didn't have good lead metrics. And we're going to accomplish this, but there's really no clear pathway to do it. So those were the two things we worked on the most early on was clear connection to strategy map, good lead metric that everybody understands this is what you do every day to make a difference it's strategic in the end you want to be able to walk into a team and say what are you guys working on strategically and you can do this in our factory and every person will tell you we are doing they'll tell you their target statement and why did you choose that they'll walk right over the strategy maps they see that right there sometimes they'll point to two things see these two things right here that's what we're doing okay how are you doing it and they'll tell you their lead metric how are you doing so far? And they'll walk you over to their graph. That's, that's the whole point, is every person driving strategy. Um, and that's what, that's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to do with strategy deployment. And so the fair, the fair really is, um, it's them bragging about how they drove strategy. Let's see. Let's do this one. Uh, take the current pieces per hour of the team from 7.1 to 9.3, a 31% improvement. Have you noticed the size of these goals? They're all pretty huge. Six months. These are six-month goals. And uh, so I'll tell you, when we first started doing this, all the goals were 3 4 5% for the year. That's how we started. We used to do it once a year. And we ended up going to six months when uh, uh, a lot of the projects were wrapping up about month 10. And they're like, oh, we want to start something new. And the VPs had May, so we didn't really, oh, can you wait? You know, and everyone's just kind of in limbo. Once we went to six months, it's like, it's like, that's a stretch. And people can barely get it done in six months. So it's perfect, perfect for us. Um, but um, we went from three, four, five percent to seven, eight, nine percent. And then we went every six months and everyone still was doing seven, eight, nine percent every six months, which I remember we were in a, a monthly leadership meeting and I said to everybody, hey, in my mind, the lean standard is double digit annual gains and you guys are doing that seven eight nine every six months that's that's 14 16 18 percent a year congratulations you're hitting the standard and i i'm obviously not as good a communicator as i think i am because the next time they set goals all the six month goals went to double digits <laughs> everyone every goal went to double there wasn't a, a single case where they didn't and uh, i remember we were like what is going on here you know we knew we knew that i had caused it uh, through my error, through my poor communication, and we were wondering if we should push back on it. We said, well, let's, let's let it go. Let's see what happens. And they hit it. So I, I don't know what the lean standard is now. I, I have no idea. But I, I do believe that if you let teams, you know, set a target and go for it, they'll do amazing things. It's their goal. They'll make it happen. So um, they were going to do it by eliminating 190 wastes, 10 per person. And uh, that was the first time we'd seen this as a lead metric. And I didn't want to be the guy who said, oh, I don't know how you become more efficient by eliminating waste. I didn't want to say that. So we're like, OK, run with it. They created this cool chart. They call themselves the Waste Warriors. 
and they were keeping track. Everybody had to do at least 10, but you know, life is a standard you know, curve. Some people do a whole lot more, some people do the bare minimum, and they just absolutely kicked butt. They were going for 33%, and uh, they went from seven, they, they, they got something like 35, 40% improvement by eliminating wastes. Uh, pretty spectacular, I think. Okay, so week two is uh, uh, the Tuesday. That's when I meet with all the directors. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we meet with all the people, share data. And then on Thursday and Friday, we do some training. And, uh, and then we break into value streams. And uh, so like the, the, the uh, press product value streams that we were in today, they would get together and they would talk about, you know, what matters to us? What do we, out of all everything we heard the last three days, what do we need to share with our people so that they can think more strategically, so that they can pick strategic projects? And that's how we end the week is with every manager, like all those ones you just saw on second shift, every one of them knows what and shares with everybody else. This is what I'm going to go back and tell my people. And we spend the next week doing catch ball and cascading strategy. We're just sharing all that information. Uh, and then the team has another week to determine where they're going to write their target statements. And uh, that's where we are right now. And then on Monday of next week, we will have an initial meeting. It's probably here. On Monday of the next week, we'll have an initial meeting with each of the team leaders, and they'll tell us, this is what we're going to, this is what we think we're doing. This is our target statement. This is where we're going. This is how it connects to the strategy map. And um, those are pretty easy now. They used to be hard, but for about the last eight, nine years, they've been really easy. Everyone comes in with the right stuff, and it's great, and it works. We're just, we're just happy. Uh, I've been doing this, these calls uh, so far with the global directors. And then next week, my team will meet with all the global directors on Zoom, and they'll do the same thing with their team. So their teams will come on and tell us what they're working on. And then uh, on Tuesday of next week, we'll be in the, in the theater, and basically every team will get up. They'll have three minutes to tell everybody, this is what we're working on, this is how we're going to do it, this is how it connects to strategy, see you in five months. And it's just like everybody telling everybody, this is what I'm doing. And then they come back and we report five months later to hold them accountable. During the, um, uh, about, so two months later, uh, my team and I go and we visit every team. We, we carve out about two and a half weeks out of our a month in each of those where we're just in the teams all day long, visiting, talking with teams. We schedule them for an hour. They don't always take an hour, but they can. And... Uh, they're basically just bragging to us about how they're doing, what's going on so far. And these are, those are very interactive meetings, a lot of time on the floor behind stuff, looking, pointing, showing, bragging, a lot of show and tell, very high energy. Um, my team, uh, whenever we go, when we do the celebration here and they report to us at the celebration, we have one-on-one -on -one time at the celebration where the teams just come and make their presentation to us before the fair starts. Whenever we're listening to them presenting, my team's instructions are smile and nod and be impressed. That's all you do. We don't, we don't listen for problems. We don't seek, you know, to show how smart we are and catch them in something. We just, we just like, wow, that's amazing. And it's easy because they're amazing. The stuff that they're saying is just like, blow me away, you know. They're just, and, and they love to present to us because we're a pretty easy audience <laughs> and uh, we admire them and they like being admired. They, they, they like to be honored by our admiration. And, and so that's the way we do it. Um, uh, we visit halfway through and if, if a team is struggling to hit their goal, maybe they got the wrong lead metric, we give them a chance they can change it, they can tweak it if they want to, they can pull harder, do something different. The other quick thing I wanted to share with you, I don't know if you saw the true north on one of the boards down here, but about uh, six, seven years ago, uh, we compiled a list of what perfection would look like. What if we were perfect? And perfection would be every system, every process, every person, every piece of equipment, 100% capable. It would be, we, we'd be delighting clients 100% with the most relevant creative product value, 100% value added. That would be, these would be perfection. And um, 
there's no trade-offs here. So like you can't, you can't say, well, come on, I could, I could, be, I could have 100% quality if I didn't have to be on time. Or, or if you stop giving me all this new product, I could be more efficient. It says, no, we're going to give you new product, and you're going to be more efficient, and you're going to be on time, and you're going to, you know, that's, that's just the expectation. It's not a pick and choose. You've got to do it all. And if you accomplish all of those, uh, including zero injuries and illness, then let's just go after impacting every life for good. That's the one at the top. You can always, we can always improve more on that one. So there's just a lot of room for, for growth here. And in addition to the strategy deployment, uh, most teams will also tell us that they're improving something here, that they've noticed a gap that they're not happy with, and they're trying to close this gap in some way. We're good with that. We're great with them having another, another project that they're working on. So um, everyone's always trying to close that gap. And I will also tell you, it's probably been, I'll bet it's been 20 years since I heard anybody say, oh, we just gave you 15%. You want more? Nobody says that. They, they always say, hey, we just got 15%. What else can we do? Let's go do some more. That's the way they talk. We never hear the other uh, anymore. We, we did early on. The people are definitely served by this system. Uh, they own their business. They're, they, they, they make it happen. And I, I feel like this system is a great way to honor them and pull them into everything that we do. So that is our strategy deployment system. I would say it's one of our top three strategy deployment. Coaching, definitely, I think coaching is probably our most important system. Uh, our improvement system is a big deal, I think, the, the, with the cards. And I think our Gemba assessment system, going to the Gemba, verifying that people are using the systems, following the principles, that's a big deal. Those are probably our big four systems and 16 others that just you know help us get along the way. So I really like this video. Gary gave a really in-depth review of how the strategy deployment system works and how it connects to our corporate strategy. And if you want to see more about strategy, check out the link below. Absolutely. You'll have to check out our strategy expo video that we did just last week where we go more in-depth about how these report outs look in the teams. So definitely like this video. Go subscribe to see more. We would hope to see you back soon. And check us out next week. Welcome back. We're so excited that you're here with us. We have got some great content for you to share today, and I got to start over. <laughs> <laughs> we got to catch some stuff. <laughs> Hold on. I had it all worked out. Check out this link to here or here. Yeah, these trees are going to change soon. I'm excited. OC Tanner is beautiful in the fall. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah.